in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed be glorified is not just a statement. Be glorified is a state where you no longer are embarrassed about the outcomes of your life. The, the reason why you are responsible over them is not the fear of failure again. It's not the embarrassment. You have, you have, you have, you have died. You have died to your ambitions. It's about him. If koinonia does not work, it's no longer about Joshua Selman's ego to say, I will, maybe this guy is backsliding. Are you seeing? So the fear of being taught to be backsliding will now drive me to go and fast and pray and buy messages. I will think I am growing spiritually, but it's self-centeredness. That's why some of you came for koinonia this night. I know you love God. But the truth about it is that that's not the reason. Let me tell you how you know we are self-centered. Whenever we do not get our desires, our responses become ugly. Five minutes before your desire, you were trusting that the woman will not die. Lord, I know you. I take you by your word for your glory. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I am your servant. And then the person, the person dies. And all of a sudden, your ego is on the line. No, 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 no. Let's raise this person back to life. And you try and try and nothing happens. And your ego is on the line. I watch it happen to people. You prophesy to somebody, in the name of Jesus, you are going to get a job. And you see the pressure on you. Men of God prophesy like that and they go back and say, Oh God, please, let this word come to pass. It looks spiritual. It is your word. So you are in such a passion to bring it to pass so that they can say apostle prophesied and like he said it came to pass is God helping us this night are you learning something self-centeredness brothers and sisters are you seeing the damage it has caused to us sister are you seeing that this is why if you are not careful you may not marry the will of God because although in your prayer you are saying lord is only your will all that is talk in reality you have already painted the picture of the man the necessary and sufficient condition to say yes to any man you have painted it it's unbending no amount of preaching no matter how pathetic will move your mind the hardness of your heart has been glued to that image must be a millionaire then you now add and say and spiritual too just to make you feel so it no longer is about the will of God same thing for people getting jobs listen listen let me tell you don't laugh about this it's a very serious thing do you know why Jesus pleased the father it was not because of his miracles it was because he was a walking expression of a body that has been dedicated for the will of God to find expression unrestrained. Here are the things that Jesus said himself. Let's look at a few scriptures. Jesus himself said this. John 17 verse 1, please. Give it to us media. Let's hurry up. I want us to pray. John 17 verse 1. John 17 verse 1. These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven. Father, the hour is come glorify now thy son many of us will stop there and then the next thing we we'll add is amen glorify now joshua selman give him money give him fame give him increase but jesus put a comma there and said that thy son 
may also glorify you in other words lord it's not necessary to have to use me to prove a point but simply because i am passionate about seeing your glory revealed use me as the vehicle for that revelation ha. there are things i know that can touch the heart of god are we together there are things i know by my experience with god that touches the heart of god more than faith believe me more than acting out spiritual things is a heart that is completely surrendered to glorify god jesus look at jesus who do be equal with god equal with god i know what jesus would have prayed at this point father remember that our glory make sure you never forget it i'm only here for three and a half years i'm coming back make no mistakes no new election in heaven i am here my position that i came to become a scapegoat doesn't mean you should take me for granted i'm calling on you you better answer me jesus submitted himself and said glorify me so that you will be glorified brothers and sisters this is the language of a life where christ sits upon the throne of that personality do you know this is what jesus came to give us there's been a confusion in the body of christ about old testament and new testament let me tell you if you meet jesus today he will never talk to you about old testament or new testament whether you are under grace or law is nonsense he's going to ask you one question who is seated at the throne of your heart jesus came to deliver us the very gospel was designed to take us away from a life of self-centeredness not from a life of works no from a life of self-centeredness the motivation behind our activities being us to a life that is glued to glorifying christ brothers and sisters i don't care whether you are in the old testament or new you are not born again if christ is not seated at the throne of your heart i don't care how many times you have recited salvation prayer the essence of the coming of jesus is not just to bring a new order the essence of the coming of jesus is to align men back to the purposes of the kingdom where christ himself will be seated the lord gave me a revelation this morning both the elder brother of the prodigal son and the younger brother committed the same sin the only difference was one executed it openly whereas the other one kept it which is an example of the two kinds of believers we have both of them were tired of the leadership of their father one had the courage to express it one kept it they wanted ownership and here's what the first one said the first one said give me that self-centeredness there give me i know you gave me access but i don't want access because the access is in your name i now want it in my name give it to me the younger the elder brother did not say give it to me but it was in his heart listen i'll prove it to you when the prodigal son returned back and they were celebrating him what happened to the elder brother he became angry and this is what he said father i have served you all these years you have not even given me a small um you know a small animal cattle to slaughter for me and my friends you see the offense the self-centeredness was still there in other words lord i have served you will you not reward me see this is the imbalance of the doctrine of covenant that i always balance i've been insulted many times because of this i tell believers in terms of our personal work we are not in a covenant with god it's a relationship it is only when you talk about kingdom advancement and now bringing the operation of the principles of the kingdom then you bring covenant are we together because you see jesus gave a parable to explain that in the morning he saw some people idle and he called them to go and walk in the farm is that true he negotiated money with them that's covenant terms you walk i give you a denary later in the afternoon he saw some people idle 
and he said why sittest thou idle he said no my employers he said go based on relationship they went because they loved him and they believed him there was no arrangement that he was going to pay them even till the 11th hour one hour to close time he still saw somebody he said go now when he started rewarding them see how he rewarded them he started with the covenant people since my agreement with you was one denary take and then he called those who went because they loved him and said since you were in this farm to promote my interest i will now decide what to give you and a person who worked for one hour received the same reward with somebody who started in the morning and the guys were angry they said no something is wrong and he said what you negotiated with me the same way you are saying lord i will serve you in ushering department my husband must come before koinonia ends thank you for that that's a covenant you will get the husband but what if god wanted to give you a husband plus an anointing and a destiny those two you robbed yourself because the motivation listen I know there are times we can tie things to God but brothers and sisters let me tell you the higher you rise with God it no longer matters whether you get results or not it now becomes his glory for your glory I will do anything to behold you as my king One more time. For your glory, I will do anything just to see. To be called you as my king. I want to be where you are. John 4 34 Jesus said this John chapter 4 verse 34 Jesus said my meat is not to build a ministry he didn't say my meat is to prove that I am savior look at this do you know that every time they challenge Jesus about his his messianic persona did you see the way he was not under pressure to defend himself I know what I would have done, Joshua Selman. Ah, uh, I'll tell media, make a montage and prove to these people, gather all the miracles that have happened and tell them, are you stupid? Is that not the power of God? But, I mean, they met Jesus. The woman was caught in adultery. Jesus would have said, but you guys are foolish. Don't you know that I can do word of knowledge? In fact, the name of the husband, the name of the man that slept with her is Rabbi Benjamin. Where is he come out? And people will clap and say, my God. Hi, Rabbi, you are the one. But Jesus did not see a need for that. He was more concerned about that woman. But he answered them in a dangerous way. Instead of saying, I am the only one qualified to cast stones. He said, he who has no sin, cast the first stone. In other words, whoever among you fits that definition, cast the first stone. All of them left. And she was left with the only person who was to cast the stone. He said, since I am qualified, I choose to let you go. Go and see no more. That's Jesus for you. That's the Jesus we try to preach about that we don't understand. We shout and spit on people trying to preach him. Yet we don't pay attention to understand him. Are we together? The essence of Christianity, brothers and sisters, is not legalism and religion. The essence of Christianity is not even evangelism. The essence of Christianity is not heaven. The essence of Christianity is not prosperity and money. The essence of Christianity is not ministry and healing. The essence of Christianity is a life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Replaced from a life of self-centeredness to a life that is absolutely committed to seeing Christ enthroned first in your life and throughout every territory regardless of what your own achievement is while you do that is nonsense it's only secondary 
listen when you get this thing i'm telling you you will see the power of god in your life i can tell you this is why many people are not anointed i've said it the key to the anointing is not just fasting and prayer i've seen people fast for hundreds of days you fast with yourself at the center of your heart you have only succeeded in doing a good weight loss program i assure you you are not going to touch the anointing a heart that is dedicated to seeing his glory come okay lord this is the lady i want to marry oh, i like her but thy will everybody say thy will be done say thy will this is the language of a christ-centered life lord i want to go to london it's always been my desire however I realize that my life is not my own the Bible says I've been bought with a price you don't act as if Jesus didn't finish paying for you he paid for you completely in fact whether you are born again or not you are still his property the earth is the Lord's and the fullness therein right so whether through sovereign ownership or through the manifestation of the love of his son you still belong to him listen to what jesus said my meat this is what moves my life my nourishment my satisfaction is to do the will of who him that sent me and to finish it i am more concerned about doing the will than enjoying any blessing that comes while doing the will so if in the course of doing the will of god I operate certain principles and I enjoy blessings while I'm wearing the nice suit while I'm driving the nice car my gaze is set on seeing him glorified so prosperity no longer has the power to distract me because I met it on my way to pleasing God whether or not I met it I am determined to still finish pleasing him so Paul says what then shall separate us from the love of God look at this the apostle who brought himself back to life they killed paul immediately they went he came back to life and shook himself my god a man who wrote two third of the gospel this is what he said for for me to live is christ i don't know for you but for me to live is christ then even if i die listen Paul was not saying if I die as a result of armed robbery and they shoot me. If you die as a result of armed robbery, it's not gain. It's a loss because one, you are going to hell. Number two, the kingdom is not advanced through that. But that Paul was trying to say, look, my passion is to pour myself as a drink offering. And regardless of what personal results come to me or otherwise, it is secondary. So compared to the fulfillment of God's program, your marriage is secondary. That marriage that has topped the prayer list of miracle service every week. And then later, the number 27 is now, God, your will be done. Exclamation mark. After you have written everything and vented out your lust. He sees. He looks from heaven. The Holy Spirit sees our motivations. While we pray, he's watching us. While we do the things that we try to do, he's watching us. While we gossip about people, you would think it's because of a passion to see them improve. It's simply a system to show a weakness in them so that you can justify your own. That you are not willing to hand over to the cross. Let me tell you, if you want to love God, he will love me for what I'm teaching you this night. It's the key to make spiritual men. A life that is completely out and you see some of us we come from cultures that the system of the culture by default makes you self-centered are we together we come from cultures where the system of the culture by default was designed to make you self-centered they look at you and say promise how old are you and you say uh, uh, maybe I'm, 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 I'm 32 or I'm 30 or I'm 35 and they say ah, you should have a car by now ah, what are you saying you should have a car and have a five children and this and then that challenges you and you go back and say lord they are insulting you god said they are not insulting me 
if they are insulting me i will react i'm not offended i said god me i'm offended i'm serving you <laughs> you see we create all kinds of theological messages let me tell you if he's the one taking the glory why are you taking the shame listen whoever is taking the glory should be the person taking the shame please help me why do you claim god is taking the glory but you always take the shame are we together take it half on me David. see how we pack the shame and we claim that we're giving god the glory we are not there's a song in my spirit and the shout of the earth will be your praise god forever and the light unto all will be your wonderful name all the glory lord is yours god forever all the glory is yours listen lord jesus if i remain barren like this i give you praise i will never stop serving you but it is your reputation so let the pressure go to him are we together the moment people look at you and say are you a woman or a man direct the shame to him but you sit down and absorb the shame and say god give me a man child or i die and god says this thing you are doing is not for my glory it's spiritual you are sincere i'll show you why many people never get rich they think the key is doing business they think the key is after all of these things god looks at your heart and says no sir you are better off without it than you are with it because when it comes to your heart it will possess you and tear you so you see that it's not all about imparting anointing apostle i'm not seeing crowds in my ministry i know if you speak a word the doors will open and here i'm, I'm just looking at you in your sincerity but you dared your fellowship members that you are coming to collect power like a charm and say watch me when i come back you will see what will happen to this church your self-centeredness drove you for hours on the road sweating and praying feeling spiritual and you could not wait to see me the moment you receive that anointing whether or not you thought you received it you were in a hurry and you say from today don't play with me anyhow apostle laid hands on me see the picture Aren't you surprised at what you call the sudden change when people get results? They never change suddenly. They only manifested it. I told you, the prodigal son did the same thing with the elder brother. We keep, I used to accuse the, the younger one and leave the elder brother. But I found that two of them were only different versions of the same thing. One was quiet with his own while the other one executed it. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 22, verse 42. We are going to pray. I like us to read it. This was Jesus at Gethsemane. Listen, listen, listen. There are two things here that we must understand. We are going to read it. But the first thing you need to understand is Jesus had his own will. It is okay to have your will. It is okay to have your desires. Only that your desires must come under divine scrutiny. And if need be, give way for the will of God to prevail. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Yeah. Your desires are only worthy of execution when they find themselves in harmony with the divine will of God. If at any point your desires, no matter how intelligently constructed, if there is a difference from your desires and God's desires, one must bow. And for many of us, largely it's been God's desires bowing. So salary leads you to the job. Are we together? You look at the lady and say, Kai, I like the way this lady speaks. Don't you think she'll be a nice wife? You see, let me tell you something, brothers. Let me give you a frank advice. If you keep being carnally minded, I give you two guarantees. Guarantee number one, you will miss out on the will of God. Two, you are going to pay 
for your foolishness when it has to do with marriage you have to take your eyes away from carnality and focus on God I saw that lady figure 8 be careful be very very careful I know what I'm saying doesn't make sense to many of us but you ask many people who are sadly regretting missing the will of God there is no price that is too great to walk in the will of God father if thou be willing remove this cup from me here's the language of spiritual expression in our lives nevertheless not my will I have a will I have a desire but nevertheless not my will Lord your will be done according to my desire I plan to own a house in every state in Nigeria but Lord I bring that will to your scrutiny does this fit in the master plan of your blueprint for my life? And if at any point it's not part of it, I drop my ego. I drop my ego. These are men and women who will be used by God in this end time. Let me tell you, those who will be used in this end time are not just those who understand revelations and mysteries. Because the Bible says knowledge will cease, prophecy will cease. Those who will carry strange mantles in this season are men and women who God can obstruct their life at any point without having no need to explain it. There are too many of us who put God like a defense. Lord, tell me why I should leave Zaria now. And we put our hands in our pocket. I'm waiting for you. And then you have to come and God says, all right, uh, take it easy. The reason is because... I have seen something I said, I don't understand. Clarify. When you make God that slow to birth his purposes through you, there are dimensions you will never enter. And the spirit drove Jesus. He didn't say, Jesus, are you in harmony with me? Let's go to the wilderness. You are going to get power there. If you want God to explain to you the reason why he's doing everything in your life, your life will be too slow for impact. You have to start moving and let your mind catch up. And say, Lord, your thoughts towards me are thoughts of good and not of evil. I don't have to wait until I understand. You are too good to destroy me. Mm. You are too good to destroy me. So whether you are in the valley of the shadow of death, rather than sitting down and, and just talking and say, God, you serve Kai. If I were an unbeliever, by now, I would have done something. God, do you know it's because I'm a Christian that I'm here? It's not like I don't know where Babalao is. All those stupid statements that we make when we are under fire is a sign that the fire is roasting our self-centeredness. That's why the Bible says when we walk through the fire, you won't rush it. It has to burn off that dross so that when you come out like gold, the life that I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Five years after marriage, no child, and people come. And you know, people are so naughty, they can say something and say, ah, Madam, you are serving God. What is all this one? At least go, go for koinonia now. Eh? Apostle is anointed. He can, is it pride? What is stopping you? And then after listening to those things, you can go back and cry and say, Oh God, give me a child or I die. No. You say, Father, a child or no child, let me tell you one truth, me and you. We are stuck to air forever. A child is too small a reason for me to put my relationship with you on the line. How many people have seen carry over and left God? They say, what, what is the use? The day I served God, I failed. When I didn't serve God, I succeeded. And you hear preachers stand on stage and preach nonsense. Nonsense! 
Is that all your life is about? Why do you compare your relationship with God with academics? Is it ever a match? Why do you compare your relationship with God with marriage? Why do you compare your relationship with God with a job? Is, is our self-centered mundane pursuit that reduce God to be equal with these things? God will never, I cannot reduce God to the issues of my life, the petty issues of my life and say, God, you are uh, uh, me. Ask him, ask him, you are spiritual people. Will I ever open my mouth and tell God he's not faithful? Why? That what happened? Just because there was no tea to eat, you, to, tea to drink and bread to eat, you carry the Bible and run around heaven. Oh God, are you giving me tea or I should tear my Bible? Is this your word? And God says, now nah, well, what is all this one? Just because of tea you are shouting. self-centeredness this is why the anointing does not work in the life of people this is why God does not lift certain people inside outside online you are hearing me and the Lord is speaking to you can your will bend to the will of God look at me if your will cannot bend to the will of God you are carnal it's not an insult it's a description you are carnal and self-centered let me tell you how you know your will has bent to the will of God. When sacrifice no longer becomes an issue in your life. If God says, Joshua Selman, remove the SIM in your phone now and give somebody this phone. I don't say, oh God, see, let's be real. Me, I'm trying. Let me, I, I want to show you why many of us are carnal. The ease with which you release things is a measure of how much you are self-centered. And I'm not talking of small things. Your tongue singlet, God says, give. You say, ah, after all, I was going to even burn it. So let me give this guy. That's not giving. God will never ask you to give what they gave you. He will ask you to give what you worked for. He's very smart. If he says, if he, he look, let me tell you something. This our God is powerful. He will allow your emotions to be connected with the gift. Then he will ask you to release it. God will never ask you to release what you are not emotionally connected to because it doesn't make sense. The essence is not the giving. The essence is your heart giving him space to find expression. When Satan comes to you, he studies the things that have not been surrendered to God. That becomes his weapon of mass destruction in your life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not. If the Lord asks me now and says, Son, let this be your last sermon as Joshua Selman. In the name of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Lord, I'm standing before him. I will not lie to you. When I drop this mic, no committee council meeting will make me pick a mic again to preach. I will cry because I have a lot of passion for this. But I love him more than that. If you like, carry placard. Bring back apostle. Move around with it and say, no, you must come back. The demon that manipulated your mind, you must come back. I said, I understand. You are human. If I were you, I would do the same thing. But I'm not going back again. Let me tell you, brothers and sisters, listen. I have laid down things in my life you will not believe. It's a price. Some of us, finances, whenever money is leaving you, even if you are keeping it, I don't mean you are giving it, just that you are keeping it, it's not in your pocket, you feel the pain. Just that it's somewhere aside from your pocket. That is the apex of carnality, materialism, and self-centeredness joined together. God does not want your money. What does he do with it? God does not want your clothes. He wants your heart. Because when he finds your heart, he finds everything. Sisters, let me tell you why some of you are not rising at the pace you want. Your life is full of so much carnality. It's not an insult. You love God. But the truth about it is there are many shrines and idols in your heart. You have surrounded them so much. You would dare not even allow the voice of God interrupt anything. Lord, don't come and interrupt my program. I have my life all planned out. Same thing with the brothers. 
That's why people are confused in Nigeria. They don't know what to do with their lives. They claim they are hearing God. They claim they are walking with God. But their lives are very clear that they are moved by insecurities and sociological pressures to show they are successful. Are we together? The quest to buy a car. The quest to get married. The quest to have children. You have all girls. And somebody is asking you, ah, Kilo Day, we need girls and boys. So, and you now turn and land the warning on your wife. Say, Madam, you had that thing, please. I'm tired of this embarrassment. Oh yeah, let's pray. Lord, give us a child for your glory. No, give us a child for my ego. My masculinity is being insulted. And I want to use you to cure it. And God says, no way. I'm not that cheap. Brothers and sisters, this night, I want you to come to a place where the anthem of your life is nevertheless not my will but your will be done you find peace in your life i like job job lost everything in his life as if that were not enough you can lose any other thing if you have your health you are okay he lost his health dogs would come and lick the source of job do you know what that means imagine seeing aliko dangote on the streets of zaria and these dogs that roam around licking him and then his wife standing by him with a dark dirty wrapper and people look and say job you where were the friends you helped and job sat down there and the wife was so attached to her reputation and she said job curse god and die and job said uh -uh, uh -uh. though he slay me though he slay me i know i've been embarrassed my ego has been stung till there's no ego yet will i trust him all the days of my appointed time i will wait until my change comes the three hebrew boys said oh king let it be known unto you that our god will deliver us we know that there is a provision in him to deliver us however even if aha uh -huh, your faith equation does not call that one you call even if doubt yeah, nothing my husband must come december lord i tell you i've sown seed i am even taking communion please don't give god a headache with all these stories save yourself all that immaturity say lord i give you praise i'm showing you the secret to peace there are men and women who have found peace you see them rejoicing and they are happy because they have found a system in god that it is more beneficial for him to be glorified than for your agenda to find expression it's not about the crowd it's about his kingdom it's not about Joshua Selman it's about his kingdom I bring you the message that represents the epicenter of the gospel that has been misunderstood even by preachers who preach the New Testament what they preach in the New Testament is they say, okay, now there's no more works. Jesus has done everything. Enjoy. That's complete nonsense. It's an incomplete truth. The key is he brought you to a state where you no longer are self-centered. The motivation behind everything you do is now for his glory. There's nothing that gives my life joy as that name, be that word be glorified. Lord be glorified. It's my statement every time. When I pray, all I tell him is be glorified. Be glorified. Preparing for miracle service, Lord, I thank you. I love you with all my heart. Your people are coming. They are trusting that you will use me. And Lord, I thank you. Be glorified. Every time I stand on this stage and I look at you, believe me. I have no business trying to impress anybody. His glory. His glory. That's why I do the things that I do. We just rounded up our external ministration for the year and it's been a busy year. Sometimes while we're traveling, when we're on transit, I just sit down. The last meeting was last week and we had to leave, I think 4.30 in the morning to catch up with our flights to Lagos. And while we're going in the night, I was saying, what is all this? Why am I risking my life like this? I didn't sleep. I wanted to rest my head and the next thing it was time and I had to what am I looking for ministry am I so dull that I cannot write a book can't I do a webinar 
are there not intelligent ways to make myself omnipresent the internet has helped to make omnipresence possible i can be everywhere so what what the heck is all this traveling around and all of a sudden you just remember for his glory for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my king for your glory i will do anything just to see To behold you as my king, I want to be where you are, I got to be where you are, I want to be where you are. Listen, let me preach to you this night. Some of you, the load you are carrying is a demon that put it on your head. That load is not from God. The Bible says my yoke is easy and my burden is light your life is surrounded by too many self-inflicted worries worries that make no sense at the foundation of those worries is your self-centeredness and your desire to solve those problems for the sake of your ego but i bring you a message here's what jesus said come on to me it is a discourse with me come on to me all ye that are heavy laden and are weary he says and i will give you rest i will give you rest the worry in your life is killing you sister the worry in your life is killing you there are some of us who are older than our age they look at you and they say how old are you let me guess uh, 37 you say me i'm just 25 what what made that worry added an age that was not given by god you see people worry all the time they get up in the morning they are worried ah the bible says which of you by worry can add one cubit this is scripture do you know honestly speaking sometimes when 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 i drive around the road or when i stand i start laughing in the car i'm just laughing because i'm saying my god what made people like this how did people suddenly become like this you see a man quarreling somebody a conductor insisting that that five naira must be given and the person is refusing and then you stand somewhere someone is stealing they are catching him someone is cheating somebody in the market a lady is frowning her way to the market and you look at this and say my god who programmed us like this because when you die all these things end right now as i'm speaking an arm robber is trying to fly a fence he may die this night but he's thinking they are already calculating when you do this job we'll steal this one then we'll run out he may die this night that's his mindset when jesus says i will give you rest believe it there is a pastor right now who is not sleeping he's under pressure the messages i'm preaching are they new or are they still does it look like i'm growing pressure how can we multiply the members i already prophesied that we're going to have three times and now it's almost december we need like one thousand more people how can we do that your ego on the line forcing you to wake your leaders in the night in the name of leaders meeting but it's simply your ego on the line please rest prophesy to someone close to you say rest say it rest i bring you a system in the kingdom where men can hand over these self-inflicted problems look at this come sir if this guy is an armed robber watch this this is an example if he's an armed robber and you catch him stealing now i'm the policeman and i'm about, about to shoot him are we together the moment i shoot this guy and he falls to the ground is that a, an armed robber again that's not an armed robber are you seeing that's an innocent body that was controlled by nonsense for many years and understanding made that body jump a fence by force something else can come into that body and that body suddenly becomes a pastor it was never the body the body did not jump on the fence by itself 
a self-centered nature of wanting to be like the young guys too we are like the young guys the ones that have you see you see there's this craze among young people the ones who have made it let me see the designer you are wearing the watch how much hundred and how many thousand there is are you wearing versace or this and the other person said kai you see i'm tired of all this tailor tailor team this guy that is sewing something suit is bending around i need to start dressing well and we put ourselves under pressure that's what some of you are doing now you promise yourself to wear a particular weave before christmas it's unnecessary that money can pay your rent your small house that you are you are paying unnecessary things listen please i want you to write this down the only thing that is worth your blood the only thing that is worth your blood listen to me is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage write it down these are the only two things in this life that is worth your blood worth you waking up to not sleep the only thing that is worth your blood is your relationship with jesus and if you are married your marriage two things they are the only things that the bible places so much priority onto even unto death thank you are we together i think it was last week or the week before last i sang a song i will sing it again when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in married clay turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life when life brothers learn this don't be foolish husbands 10 years from now don't join the confusion of men who are punishing their wives and their children my ego my this all this nonsense that wrinkles men to death high blood pressure killing men they die of high blood pressure and what brought the high blood pressure is never solved oh i would never be that foolish never be that foolish this is what I'll do with my life. Nina Dokaka Sunanka Ubangi Chika is a This is the part of the song that I really like. We'll raise your banner high. We shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. That's the reason why we are alive. Lord, we will raise your banner high. We'll shine your light so bright. We'll sing in honor of you. Prophesy one minute to yourself and say, I reject worry. Say it. I reject it. No, you came with culture, but I reject you. I reject self-centeredness. I hand over the management of my life to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Whatever God cannot do, cannot be done. No, whatever God cannot do, let no man fool you that it can be done. <laughs> Listen, listen, come. 
if God does not give you a wife if you like wear suit speak English you can choose nonsense for yourself the depression you are having going online wanting to like every lady capturing people's pictures on your phone is nonsense that self-centeredness on rampage hand over that rubbish to God and rest if God does not give you a husband cat walk jump pray in tongues cook you will never marry until he gives it a man can have nothing except it is given unto you if God does not open access to wealth do business buy sell sell cement sell sand do anything I assure you you will never have this thing in the kingdom is not an achievement it's a trust he said my son give me your heart God does not anoint you try to start a ministry you will be shocked that you are preaching well yet nobody will come because it has not been given everything in the kingdom is given until it is released from heaven you will never have it Hi. the worry of men is killing them listen listen because of the healing ministry I study a lot about health do you know I have found out I'm not a doctor we have doctors here but most of the disease what we call it disease people put themselves in an atmosphere that destroys them I tell you I have come to the conclusion that aside from demonic influences all sicknesses all sicknesses are psychologically related depression when will you come and build a house in the village and you are under pressure you have one million naira that you would have used to plan your life but somebody has stimulated your egocentric nature and you go to the village you start building and die there have you ever gone to uk no 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 and you are putting yourself under pressure selling your car selling your wife selling your children to get the tp to go to uk and live like a fool at the borders go and see nigerians abroad see them under bridges when a student is here in nigeria and he's working they tell him no concentrate but when he goes abroad he can be scrubbing toilet and be schooling they say it's all right our carnal nature producing this nonsense we see in society let it change tonight please it's like a it's like something spinning men the moment you are born you enter into it it starts spinning you till death you can come out of it and you will be amazed at how people have been killing themselves by themselves i live a very happy life i'm telling you i live a very happy life when people look at me and say apostle the burden of the ministry i say me burden of the ministry you are joking i can be tired though physically speaking but maybe fatigued like frustration from ministry never anybody who tells you i'm ever frustrated in my life go and tell that person is a liar from the pit of hell i am a very very happy person whatever i don't have i keep it when koinonia started here miracle service i, I will wear a suit that can buy a bike and climb the bike are we together i will climb the bike and it will come and there will be overflow of people here i will drop from the bike and people are watching ah this apostle on a bike i mean i don't have to sit down and tell myself i know how many times a jimmy can be a witness i went to go and buy a car and god said leave this place there was a time i finished the arrangement can you imagine that embarrassment standing you are happy you are smiling about to call your people and saying i'm making it and god said what are you doing here your ego will not allow you to leave you say no way god collect it i will buy and you buy it and it never gives you joy when you insist on taking what god did not give you he will take back something he gave you write it down when you insist on taking what god did not give you believe me he will take back something he gave you we raise your banner high we shine your light so bright we sing in honor of you lord i will raise your banner high 
I shine your light so bright I sing in honor of you Do you know you know my people have learned a lot of things working with me because they travel do you know there are times we've gotten to the airport we just get to the airport and because we arrived late we've missed our flight they have they have learned this that i don't worry if someone calls me now and says apostle your house is on fire your car is on fire everything is on fire your bank is on fire i will tell them let me finish koinonia when i finish i look at it i say okay so what bond there's nothing we can recover glory be to God I give you praise do you know what I'm going to do I'll go back and I'll sleep to wake up and say ah my life <laughs> no I've grown up you know what we say I'll say okay in house it'll never happen never happen I'm giving you the secret of rest some of you are surprised is it really true because it is never a reality you have come to conceive in your mind you are already you have acclimatized yourself to worry you never believe that there can be such a reality it is your ego self-centeredness self-centeredness please please hear me hand over your life to God I, I'm not I don't mean born again you keep hearing me say this I, handing your life to God is not reciting salvation prayer no coming to a point where you relinquish ownership Lord it belongs to you nevertheless not my will but thy will be done nevertheless not my plans but your plan be done nevertheless not my desires but your desires I know the Bible says he will give us the desires of our hearts but brothers and sisters he will only give you the desire that is consistent with his will so you don't coin a desire by yourself and start imposing God using scriptures like a charm to turn his hand no the desire must be consistent with his will Lord do whatever you want to do with my life it's yours it truly is yours I've told him this many times koinonia belongs to him you can call me anything you want to call me it's never my ministry I don't have the power to run a ministry it belongs to him that's why he spreads it the way he wants and does with it things that are even more than my frame of wisdom I imagine how depressed I would have been if I were doing ministry by myself and in my strength I live a very happy life most times when we travel for meetings they don't even know who apostle is as soon as we drop most times i'm in my polo with my earphones listening to something and they walk to mike and say good afternoon sir and then they turn to victor good afternoon and then they just see me and i can see the shock this is the thing we have been waiting for for hours at the airport there is this treasure in earthen vessels it gives me joy listen it gives me joy when i decrease because the more i decrease my problems decrease the more I decrease, my worry decreases. Whoever is the landlord is the one who renovates the house. I, I, I mean, let him, let him handle everything. He's not in me as a tenant. He's in me as a landlord. I give you the secret of peace. Quit the life of self-centeredness. Finances, all of this. I, I'm trying to do this. Keep your ego on the line. If you ever seek prosperity, let it be because you desire for his kingdom to come and mean it seriously and show it by how your current resources are advancing his kingdom. If your 10 naira does not advance his kingdom, your 1 billion will not advance his kingdom. One gentleman came and met me and he said that, um, that he wanted to be to, me to pray for him. He's a kingdom financier. I said, really? He said, by God's grace, he wants to be giving maybe like 100, 100 million to like 10 different ministries every month i said wow that's great and this guy came to my place he didn't even buy orange of 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 50 naira i i, I told him i said you will not be a kingdom financier as you can see that i am not looking for this but if you don't have the sense i am god's servant you believe i'm god's servant and you cannot buy orange of 50 naira right I see the shoe you are wearing I see everything you are wearing you come and you are twisting your tongue for hours telling me you want to sow 100 million your heart is not giving there's no giver in your heart so you are not going to give you are only a liar 
and the money will kill you. You don't even get it, sir. It's not even, you will not get it. At best, you will just be comfortable. God is not a fool. You can choose your way and die with it. But his way? Do you know, as I'm preaching to you now, when we begin to pray, some of you will find out that certain sicknesses will just leave you. Because the foundation of, you've taken Panadol, you've taken injection, it has not left. Because the spirit that sponsors that thing is sitting on a mindset that is comfortable. You hand over your life to God. That's all. Absolutely. That's all. Every time people ask you things you don't know the answer, just tell them God be glorified. God be praised. Ha -ha. When will you buy a car now? You are getting too old for my liking. We give God the praise. God is going to step in. Just diplomatically laugh and leave them. Your mother calls you and says, don't come back home if there's, no, if, if there's nobody you are going to introduce. Ha -ha. My child, are you cursed? What is wrong? I am your mother. Oh yeah, I bless you. Go and bring a husband. Mommy, the Lord be glorified simple you enter your room and dance it away and dance it and let satan see you rejoicing uh -uh, you are you're a graduate you are you are masters you even have phd no job what is wrong with you this other guy is a smoker and he's working in nmpc you claim to love god uh, and even i mean you cannot even get a job anywhere jesus be praised be glorified not in the name of jesus i will go about what kind of i'm tired of unbelievers mocking me let them mock if you take the shame what are you doing with the glory he cannot take the glory and give you the shame whoever takes the shame should also take the glory rise up on your feet take over take over i have come to the end of myself take over Take over. I have touched the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to the end of myself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have come to Sing it from the depth of your heart. Hey, hey, take over. Take over. I have come to the end of myself Take over, take over I have come to the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah I have come to the end of myself Hallelujah, hallelujah I have come to the end of myself Prayer point number one Lord, take away this load from my life. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Take it away. This unnecessary pressure to prove a point. This unnecessary pressure is making me greedy. Is making me covetous. Take it away from my life. Koinonia, pray. Lord, take this load. It's depressing me. I can't sleep because of it. I cry alone in the night because of it. I hand over everything to you. Pray, pray your way to freedom. Pray your way to liberty. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. hallelujah hallelujah prayer point number two listen 
you are going to wage warfare in the next two minutes against all the traits that your self-centeredness has produced listen some of you have bitter jealousy you love god but if you ever see something that is not in you 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 get resentful covetousness high-mindedness you crave for recognition you will claim you don't but it's written all over your life your appetite for recognition is to a fault you may not directly go to look for it but when they bring it the way you jump at it shows you desire it are we together what of lost lost your appetite for lost has driven you beyond imagination appetite for vain glory i am pastor this not brother this self-centeredness what of your desire to outshine others ladies you always want to be seen as a happening person it's a spirit you pride yourself in outshining others what of pastors the competitive jealousy that moves around men of god everybody trying to tear down another to show he is standing is self-centeredness what of all the religious activities done to command respect not just to glorify god prayers fasting look serious but motivated behind it is the desire for a name listen listen nimrod kush said go to come let us build a city whose top will reach the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves the issue was not the city the issue was the name everywhere the spirit of the antichrist manifested is sought self-recognition i like you to pray mention those attitudes mention those attributes and let them die in your life lift your voice don't be arrogant don't claim there's nothing to pray for selfishness lord deliver me pray open your mouth and pray jesus deliver me from lust deliver me from pride i have a bitter and a wicked heart deliver me from it i don't rejoice at the progress of others deliver me from it I'm so obsessed by my desires I don't care who gets hurt on the way deliver me oh God are you praying I have paid less attention to the needs of people it's always been about me my opinion my desire what I want are you praying hallelujah listen you are going to pray for supernatural compassion that listen beyond your desires you pay attention to the effect of your desires on the kingdom and on people don't want something so bad you don't care who dies listen listen don't go to people's houses and inconvenience them and not care whether they are being inconvenienced provided your desires are met you must have a sense of empathy you don't go to a house their resources are about finishing and you don't even have the spirituality to say no even when they offer you some things there are some things the answer is no yes cannot be the answer to everything are you hearing what i'm saying you must sustain the discipline it cannot be give me give me your hand is always open to collect 
there are times do you know do you know there are certain homes that sometimes I, i'm not saying this is the general reason but there are times i deliberately will not want to go do you know why especially some of our parents and loved ones i will not go because i know how much they honor me and sometimes they can be constrained financially are we together and i know that attempting to go there they will go out of their way maybe even borrow money to try to put things in place and i say no 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 or sometimes i take them unawares and i insist that they don't give anything maybe a cup of water just to bless the house but some of you i know that if you are functioning in this grace people will lock their houses when they see you because you will inconvenience people how many millionaires in many churches cannot testify because the day they just testify i paid a tithe of one million the pastor says see me after service the other office not the regular one and that man never rests text message all the time we need chairs in this church is god speaking to you let me know if he's talking all kinds of pressures the discipline to have empathy for people don't want something so bad you enter a room you want to cook your food you pour water on people's bed that's it the room you are self-centered you are more concerned about your stomach you don't care what happens to any other person there are husbands like that they never pray they never do anything the day they are going to pursue them from the office they organize night vigil everybody is seated at home peacefully the next thing you see one man of god who just enter like a thief and start singing around and he'll call everybody and nobody will sleep that night because the man has a problem but when somebody is about to die and they say ah my husband let's pray say no 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 that's their business our society is full of self-centeredness that's why many husbands never enjoy their homes they claim they have experience in marriage but their self-centeredness destroys them many wives same thing many children same thing self-centeredness fools the society i like you to pray and say lord give me compassion to study the effect of my passion on others to make sure that i not only receive results but that i don't damage the destinies of people in a bid to get my desires lift your voice and pray if I of empathy of the feeling of others the bible says for we do not have a high priest who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity hallelujah listen there are some of you after this meeting you are supposed to send text messages to certain people and tell them i'm so sorry i never realized that my desire has been hurting you so bad there are people you are supposed to send them text messages are we together yeah so bad they make their bed you bring your friends and scatter their bed and you stand up and walk away you are so conscious about your desire you don't care about the feeling of anybody to hell with anything there are others your relationship too many people have suffered because of your own relationship you carry your wife or your husband to be to a house loot their food eat everything i mean come on there are others is their job don't let anything you have intentionally cause trouble and break people down it's not worth it when the election Nigeria's election and the president now won Jonathan did something I'm not a politician but he did something that touched my heart there were so many prophecies that had come that he will win from men of God who had had credible track records and the moment that happened he would have put his ego on the line and shed the blood of millions of Nigerians but he said no his aspiration is not worth the blood of Nigerians and he declined that for me is no matter what went wrong in his government that I seen on the cake 
has made him a man of honor and an international elder statesman. The model of his concession is what is being used in many African nations right now. Leaders who otherwise would not concede and receive def defeat. His life has become a template. That's what happens when you create a sense of empathy. Don't say, I want the shoe so bad, if I must steal, I will steal. I want the phone so bad, if I must remove the phone of the seam of my roommate, to just ask, please, grow up. Don't put people in trouble because of your desires. It's too selfish. One more time, you are going to pray and say, Lord, help me. I'm tired of self-centeredness. Now my eyes have been opened, and I'm seeing how much, because of my life, so many people's destinies are almost being destroyed my gossiping around to explain myself has caused pain to all, too many people from today i receive grace to shut my mouth my blood mail has destroyed too many people i have joined the hands of the heads of good friends i have caused trouble for too many people it's not worth it i'm a child of god stony heart put a heart of flesh listen two prayer points and we're done the next prayer point you are going to pray and say lord let nothing aside from my relationship with you ever be a do or die in my affair in my life again let, let i will be responsible within the limits of responsibility but lord i declare that aside from my relationship with you and my marriage let nothing be a do or die affair in my life again to make me almost want to destroy myself to get it lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray believe me when i tell you nothing aside from the purposes of god is a do or die affair you will kill yourself for nothing Hallelujah. Let's round up. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. Matthew chapter 6, please. From verse 9. We are reading down to 13. Keep standing if you can. We are rounding up already. Let me teach you something you may have never seen. After this manner, Jesus is teaching us how to communicate with heaven. Jesus is teaching us how to have an addiction for the things of God. And this is what he says. After this manner, therefore, in this pattern, pray. Pray with this order of priority. Number one, our Father which art in heaven. Priority number two, I reverence you. In the eyes of Jesus, your reverence for God is more important than the forgiveness of your sins. Look at it. After this man, I pray ye. Hmm. Jesus is teaching here. Hallowed be your name. That is the foundation for everything that I do. I want to reverence you. That is the reason why I will not go and smoke. It's not just because I'm running away from hell. No. I desire that you be lifted. Hallowed be your name. Next verse, your purposes. Are you seeing now? This is your prayer. The moment you reference the Father, the next priority is anything that will move his purposes. Look at this. I hallow your name and I desire your kingdom to come, your influence. And that desire is only achieved when your will is done in the earth. 
so he focuses on the will of god is that how you pray no your needs that's what you drum heaven with you sing one or two praise and worship songs for two minutes and yell at heaven but he's teaching us how to pray your kingdom come this is what i want next verse so that your kingdom can come effectively give us our daily bread the reason why i need daily bread is not because i'm hungry the reason why i need daily bread is because it's part of the tools that will empower me towards your kingdom coming i need to eat i need supplies in my life i need the millions and the billions so that i can be comfortable and create the atmosphere for your kingdom to come on that wise give us this day our bread next verse because i want your kingdom to come and i know that you are a holy god that my sinful nature can act as a separation between me and you forgive me our debts as i forgive others so the reason why i am asking forgiveness is not just because i want to run to heaven the reason why i am asking for forgiveness is because i dis i love him so much i do not i want to clear everything away that can stop his name from being hallowed and stop his kingdom from coming are we together 13 and lead me not into temptation give me discernment not so that i will be called apostle joshua selman give me discernment because if you lead me into temptation and my life is destroyed i will not participate in your kingdom coming and deliver me from evil there is a wicked devil there are curses and yokes there are witches and wizards there are covenants that are out to destroy lives lord i desire your kingdom to come but i'm also aware of these things so deliver me from evil and the summary of that prayer a reiteration for thine is the kingdom every power that is communicated is the power that comes for that kingdom and thy glory forever amen he said pray in this manner and your prayer will be answered when was the last time you prayed like that god give me a husband why god give me a wife why god give me a job why god wipe my tears why don't ask me that question god give me your word says so if you don't do it except you are not god and you say ah that's not a correct statement i'm god all by myself there is nothing i ever ask god that the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it if the purposes of the kingdom is not tied to it it is useless simple it is completely useless we're rounding up from beginning to the end it will always be always be you jesus oh jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do for jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you jesus so from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens it's all about you let me make a very serious altar call now please nobody moving there are two altar calls I'm going to make. Number one, those who truly need to give their hearts to Jesus. There are men and women here, listen, some of you are listening to me and the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. The greatest show of self-centeredness is rejecting the Son of the Living God. The Bible says this is a testimony that God has given unto us eternal life. It says, and this life is in His Son he who has the son has eternal life 
there are people here inside and outside online following us please you may have had me make altar calls like this or any other man of god and you've not taken it serious and then there are those who are not serious with god you just know that you need to be delivered from this life of self-centeredness i like you in the name of jesus christ very quickly those two groups of people come out quickly 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 celebrate them as they come quickly inside and outside god bless you as you come god bless you as you come from my heart to the heaven jesus be in the center it's all about you from my heart keep coming Please keep coming save time now let me tell you something one of the greatest decision any man can make in his life is to get serious with God I still want to make one more altar call there are people here you are just not serious with God just that's your own issue you are completely not serious with God or the things of God join them if the Holy Ghost is telling you you are you are the person apostle is talking about quickly please join them join them quickly inside and outside please join them you shouldn't be thinking about it you should know whether or not you are serious with God as the Holy Ghost is speaking and say no you have to take God seriously God cannot be one of those things in your life it's time to be serious with the things of God join them God bless you God bless you don't be ashamed this is a family God bless you Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. Don't mind anybody looking at you. Everybody is here for himself. God bless you. Keep coming. Hallelujah. I appreciate every one of you here. There are people here who are already born again. They are just trusting God to deliver them from self-centeredness. And there are people here who are making a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll pray for the first category of people first. If you belong to both, then you can pray both prayers. Those who are trusting God, there are many of you who should be here. You are seated there. Your ego is refusing to leave you, but no problem. Join in the prayer. Say after me, Lord Jesus, deliver me from self-centeredness. Deliver me from being the God of my own world the God of my own decisions this night I hand over my decisions I hand over my destiny to you let there be a switch from a self-centered life to a Christ-centered life where your will your desire and your purposes override every other thing that I may personally desire I receive that grace in the name of Jesus now for those of you who came out for altar call you are praying say after me Lord Jesus say don't look at me say Lord Jesus I love you with all my heart I have heard your word and tonight I make Jesus Lord of my life I decree that I'm born again I'm a child of God I declare that from today I'm walking in the light of God's love in the name of Jesus Christ now please only those who came out for the regular altar call those who came out for you know to pray and break self selfishness you can just as you go you can just return to your seat and not everybody I know there are some of you who came out you responded to the altar call specifically to make your ways right with Jesus or to make a decision you are backsliding and you are coming back to Jesus both categories I want you to follow the lady waving her hands we're going to have your details hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got
entertaining testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain